Right, so we've got other people that are doing Commodore 64 programming. I'm doing some Vic programming because we're reverse engineering Myriad. I'm also reverse engineering Jetpack on me, not by myself because I want to learn how to do those smooth uh, sprites. I want to learn how to do that. So I'm doing Jetpack, so that's gonna be something. But what I was thinking was everybody's doing all that, but there's another 6502 machine, forget the Ataris, because other people are doing Atari uh, streams, is there is this co computer that was made in Britain for mainly schools. I mean, it was the BBC Broadcasting Corporation that initiated the project. And it has a 6502 processor. So we are still trying to learn 6502, yeah, you guys. We've been using the BBC as, uh, sorry, the C64 as a, a way of learning how to do it. But I always, I've, I've always wanted to get more into the BBC. All right, so let me show you. All right, so look, <laughs> power cable. Let's get the dust cover off it. This is a BBC. As you can see, it's a bit of a monster. It's built, it's built like a, you could bomb it and it would still survive, you know. There's metal underneath that because that is where you sat the chub monitor. It's got a keyboard that can survive thousands of kids bashing away at it at school. So it's it sounds, if you listen to it, sounds like the pet, Commodore pet keyboard. And this one <laughs> Yeah, it, I don't think it meant micro in size. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's an absolute monster, um, but it runs at two meg, which is twice as fast as the, any of the Commodores, and it's got some real quirks. It's got its it's got ROM, pa ROM page in and all this. Now, this you this one. This one you'll have seen on my YouTube channel, um, where I have, you know, sorted out the power supply. Um, I, oh yeah, Turbo M MMC. I don't know if you can see it there, and it's got the, uh, it's got the cable there. So that's Turbo MMC. So it's got, so it's got an SD. Uh, well, it's an MMC card in it. But I have got the upgrade. Hang on, where is it? Ah, here. Where? I'm a little bit loath to take them out, but I don't know if you can see that. Yeah? But what they do is they... Let's put them over there. They actually sit there so it plugs directly into the user port and it sits there so you can see it so it's got a sd 20 c for a better term so you can store stuff onto an sd card it also which i haven't done yet got got a copro kit so what it is is that's the interface board there oops that's the interface board there and then here oh you'll see the back of it anyway it's a raspberry pi w um zero w so the raspberry pi fits into the board and then the board fits nice and snug there and what it allows you to do it allows you to run that as the different co-pros you could have so you could have a z81 another 65021 
you can run it as a, an emulating 386, you can run it as an ARM, so you end up with a two, you end up with a two meg computer here that then has a CoPro that runs like a 190 something meg. It's just ridiculous. I mean, when you run Elite off it, it's just absolutely bonkers. There's also something else in here that you can't see, and that's because it's mounted inside. But it's one of these, because I've got another one. So let me, let me see if I can get into it, because I haven't actually checked this footage. Let me just uh, cut into it. Get into it, come on. There we go. There we go. So I don't know if you can see that, but that is a modern day sideways RAM board. So it's got it's got the the memory storage there. So where my finger is, where the memory storage, or it's that one. One, it's one of those two anyway, and it can store up to sixteen ROM cards on this board yeah and then that sits on the motherboard so chuck that over there and so it acts like a sideways ram board <laughs> the pcb gun but no it's a it you have to you have to take the cpu out you have to plonk this in the cpu point and then put the cpu back on top of it this this has it installed. So I've got this now with, um, it's got 32, it's got 32 RAM, and then it's got um, 14 ROM cards on it. So I've got, um, you know, a disassembler, Excel, I think it's WordWise or something. Is, is one. So these machines, even though, I mean, this one is, how old is this one? Da, 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 da. 19, 1985. Back says 1981, but the bottom says 1985. Well, we'll go with the later one. So 1985, BBC Micro, so what? It's coming up to 30 years, 40 years, 40. And these can be can be expanded. Has someone messed up my? <laughs> you turn the light off. You turn the light off. So these are really really good. Now, unfortunately, you can pick them up cheap if you look carefully, but you run the risk that they don't turn on. Now, more than likely, it's the power supply that's blown. And I've done, I think, a set of three videos where, <laughs> where, people, where people were complaining about my soldering skills and where you fix the power supply. And, and then it runs okay. But there's not only, there's not only this, the BBC. I mean, this is a, the later one, so it's an issue 7 BBC, this one. I've also got... This beauty. This monster that weighs an absolute ton. One of those. Now this is a BBC Master. So it was the big, so this is the younger brother of the BBC Micro, but it's bigger because it was later on. Still got the <laughs> Only what? Yes, there is that. But this was the later machine. It was called the BBC Master, and it allowed you. It's got expansion ports here, so you could plug cartridges in. It still has the option to be able to do turbo MMC, turbo MMC. As you can see, I've I've had to put it at the bottom because there's no way I could put it inside because it's really rammed full in there. 
So there's the turbo, there's the SD card system in there. But you can put a CoPro in this as well. And that's what's just come last week while I was away. And let's get it out. There we go. So you've got a Raspberry Pi Zero W there. And then you've got the board. And you have to plonk it that way, I think, inside it. And we can use then as this as a CoPro like in the BBC Micro. So, so we're going to have some hardware streams where we're going to actually see these babies running, and we're going to do going to do some uh, streams using the emulator. Oh, this is heavy. Right. <sighs> so, the whole point is to, it's the whole point, yeah, I've got the hardware out, I've got the hardware out. The whole point of this is to learn a new system, yeah? We're still going to be learning 6502 because that's what you guys want to learn, 6502, how to do machine code. But I thought, you know, we've done, we've, 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 made a we've done a game that's worked Hello, on john here thank you for following hope you enjoy the stream have i had a follow oh prow seven thank you very much thank you very much so um what i want to do is to to we'll go through how to program in basic because i think the B, the the basic of the bbc micro is the best basic that's out there it outstrips the commodore basic by a mile and a half um, yes it's going to be 6502 yeah so we're going to learn how to how to do bbc basic because it's the it's the best basic that i know of Right, because Microsoft then tried copying this basic when they did uh, QBasic and QuickBasic. They copied it. But I'm also going to show you that you can actually embed assembly into a basic program. And it was one of the features that no one else had done where, as well as writing basic code, you could write some assembly in. Now, I have think I think I've got my um, project my my school project that I did when I was a kid for the BBC let me see if I can find it uh, is it in there no can't be in there don't worry guys you'll see it in a minute I'm just trying to find it <laughs> I just don't know where I put my stuff half the time. Witchcraft. No. Uh, well, I don't know where I put it. I have no idea where I put it. I knew I'd missed something. I knew I'd F drive. <laughs> the beard. <laughs> School projects, yeah. Um, I've got to find it first. I scanned it in. Where did I put it? Um, please be in here. Please be in here. Aha! Aha! <laughs> Found it! Right. Let's switch view. Here we go. Right. So, as you can see, 1985, look. 1985. 
my project. So it was a bank account project by me. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's getting there, it's getting there. But, so, May 1975, no. <laughs> but what it what I want to show you is this bit here, right? So here's the listing. So this is the listing, so let's zoom in. Right. So this is the basic listing for this uh, project. Um that I did so it was basically like um, a caching a cash account credit uh, check card account or something like that that you put in you know I spent this on groceries and that and stuff and then here we go machine code title page and look that is machine code embedded into basic right embedded in basic so you can actually write machine code routine entirely in the basic subsystem. And it's something that we're going to explore at some point. But the whole point, the whole point of this, right, is to I mean have I got the other project that I did? Hang on. Not sure. I'll have to find it because I've got another. I got another one that I did um, for what we call the National Coal Board back in the 19, 1980s. Oh, there it is! Oh, bring it on! So this was uh, a BBC. So as you can see, Midas test rig controlled via the BBC Micro, converted by me. Uh, from the Commodore version by this person. So what they had, they had a Commodore pet, right? So they had a Commodore pet underground in the mine running these massive coal face cutters, right? And they needed it converting to the BBC Micro because they were going to stick a BBC Micro down the mine to control the cutter. And my dad... Um, bless his heart could code but wasn't confident enough he could com he could convert the Commodore basic into uh, BBC basic so I I helped and then took over <laughs> so Yes, so when you run basic, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. I'll get back to that. Let me, let me finish this. So this, so there was a, a board that my dad fetched back that simulated the coal face cutter. So it had lights on it saying that it was moving left or right or going cutting and stuff like that. And I wrote, I converted the Commodore's, the Commodore PET program to work on a BBC using that board. And then they use this in the mines to to control the the test rig cutters. So, yeah, maybe I was responsible for the demise of the coal industry. <laughs> right, back to the question. <coughs> what happens is, what happens is, is it as you can see here we create a procedure you could create you create a procedure of no it was scargill yeah i know yeah they were not good days for us not good days for us yorkshire folk yeah we'll not go into that because it's, it was a bad time for us that's why we moved down here to get away from it um so what happens is is we you create a, pr a, a procedure and you embed the um, assembly code into the procedure so right at the very top of my program let's see if i can find it 
and remind see if I'm still reminding. So da, 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 da. So the must there we go. Proc machine. I think that's it. Proc machine. That's the machine code. Proc machine. Yes it is. There we go. Proc machine. So what happens is that the basic interpreter sees the procedure and then executes the procedure. And in my procedure, which is down here, we've got a four, ne four next loop. So four C equals zero to two. And, uh, and so that's going to loop through that um, code within that procedure. Uh, for next loop which happens to be the machine code so as you can see this is the machine code and then the next loop is he here no 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 here there we go there it is so it loops through this procedure three times so it's doing a three pass so it's it's um, it runs through it to understand the byte map. Runs through it uh, once it once it's understood the byte map and it's defined the labels. Then runs through it again to make sure the labels are correct. And then the last run is where it commits it to memory. And what we do, it commits it to memory using that. So we're we're setting a variable called p percent which is equal to hex 6000. So that's where it's going to put it in memory. So that's where it's going to assemble it. Then we've got this op C, which I don't know what it is. I've got to get the book out. I'll be honest, I've forgotten. I don't know what it means until I get the books out. But then we've got load, I think that's a hash because it's a pound sign, load hat 12, and then FFE3, I think that's print character. So I'm assuming that could be a print screen. But it we zero page in it. We are doing branches to labels. So we've got labels in here. Uh possibly, mate. Possibly. Um until I get the book out and, and find out. Um yes. I I, I think there's more than just the one option we've got the advanced book there anyway so we can look at it but that's how you embed machine code yeah exactly so then it does the two passes so that's how you can embed machine code into a basic program in basic now no other system that I know of can do that you know Commodores can Commodores could have machine code in basic but it was data statements you had to pre-compile it Hang on, so don't shout at me, Andy. Pre-assemble it and then convert it into data statements. Here, you didn't need to. You could actually write the code directly in your program and run it as a subroutine. <laughs> so what so as you can see, we can put machine code in a basic program. So what I want to do is I've I've looked out there and there are very few BBC uh, YouTube videos or streams ar around this very British product. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't a massive seller. It was nowhere near the sort of numbers that you got out the Commodores and um, the spectrums, I mean, even the spectrum trounced it. Yes, yes. It unfortunately didn't make it over the pond. Or, or it might have actually had some traction there. It's a very, very good machine. Yes, that was the downside. When you... Um, back in the day, I mean, even, I mean, don't get me wrong, my father bought a Vic 20 when it just came out and it was like 400 quid back then he bought a Commodore 64 when it just come out and that was like 400 pound you know um, these BBC's were um, 
Oh, uh, were there six, 600 quid for the full blown one? Because there was a model. Right. I, what I've shown you down here, right? This, this is a BBC Micro Model B. Yeah. I have a Model A. Now, a Model A was a cut down version of this. Uh, 16K of RAM. Um, half the electronics were missing. Um, but this was the full blown one. But the problem was the A's, the A's didn't sell very well because people wanted the full fat version of the BBC. Uh, not yeah, no mode seven, which was strange. Why didn't they have a mode seven? It's like the Electron. Why didn't it have a, a, a mode seven? It's cheap on memory. But this was the, this is a Model B. Yeah, so it's got all the techie stuff in the back so it's got networking and all that and stuff the only thing that this doesn't have is like I've just said it doesn't have um, the co-pro which I need to install underneath it and it doesn't have the speech synthesizer which I'm trying to get yeah and the BBC master which is down yeah, which I've already had out, but Andy's not seen it. There you go, mate. It's got the BBC Master as well. So, so the, they were rather expensive. Um, how much did you say they were, Andy? The A was 450, yeah. 600 notes for the B, yeah. They were expensive. But the the thing is, because the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation, Ah. Okay, I'll read that later. Um, you have a three and a half inch floppy for the BBC. Oh, rats. Now, as you guys know, I have got a very extensive Commodore collection. Um, my, my Commodore 64 collection is now running into 40 something machines, somewhere around there. I have every flavor of Commodore 64 machine that you can find. I have 12 Vic 20s. Two of them pristine, low serial numbers. One of them is what, what my dad bought. I, BBCs, I've got nine of them. So I've got a Model A, so I've got one Model A, all the rest are Model Bs, but they're all different board numbers. So I've got the very rare issue twos, to, to sevens. I've got more sevens than anything else. Um, but the I've got more importantly, I have got the BBC that my dad had to convert the program for the NCB. But it came right, so it came with the Z80 um, second coprocessor. It came with the 6502 second coprocessor. It came with CPM. Um, Fortran, COBOL, um, it had a, it had a dual, double-sided, switchable, five and a quarter inch drives, so it had the, it had the stacked drives, and uh, it had a, it had the original sideways RAM board on it, so, it, so when, when you open it up, You've got the motherboard at the bottom, and then sitting right smack on top of it is another motherboard, which is the sideways RAM board. You know, it's it's not 
it's not the size of this little fella. It's not the size of that little fella. It actually covers, you know, three quarters of the board. So, oh, you're getting a C128. Ooh. So, um, what this series is all about is to start at the beginning and learn how how to program the BBC because Shalom and, and I we've done Commodores yeah everybody knows how to do a Commodore and there's plenty of videos out there but what I wanted to do was something different that was still 6502 related so you're still learning 6502 but we are applying it to a different architecture and the BBC is I've forgotten how to use it. It really annoys me that after 40 years, I thought I would have remembered some of it. <laughs> I can't remember any. I was reading my, I was reading my A-level project because I was trying to understand what I was doing half the time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> I I don't know how to do a Commodore. You've never touched one, you poor soul. You've missed out, mate. You've missed out. <laughs> yeah, well um I'm trying to remember. Um this I think this was printed out. I think this was printed out on the the printer that came with the BBC, which I think was a, I think it was an Epson FX85 or something like that. So it never, the, the, the pound sign was. The FX80 was fine. Well, it was, well, I don't know what it was then, then. I can't remember what printer it was, to be honest. It wasn't the... <clears throat> it wasn't the Commodore printer that we had, because uh, we had a Commodore... Uh, tr it was not the... It was not the traction feed, you know, the, pu the pulley ones. It was the friction feed one. So I think that was the um, Commodore... Was, Okay, we'll see you later, mate. Um, oh, yeah. Mansman Tally. Could have been that. That rings a bell. That definitely rings a bell. Yeah. I'd have to talk to me dad, because I haven't got the printer. I've got... I mean, I haven't even got the Chubb monitor. It's up in his loft. <clears throat> but he told me if I wanted the monitor, I've got to go up there and find it myself, and I don't want to go up there, Loft. <laughs> so, um, so this is this stream is all about. So this stream series is all about understanding what does VDU nineteen comma one comma five comma zero comma zero comma zero mean. What does that mean? No idea. Excuse me, it must mean something because we used it. You know, what's VDU 19, 2, 4, 0, 0, 0? Make colour blue. Is it? You, you can't. Yes, I know colour has a U. So, um,. We are going to find how we're going to work through the basic part of this um, to find out because the the BBC basic, like I've said, is probably the best eight bit basic that was out there. I mean, it out it it outstripped the Commodore's basic. It outstripped Sinclair's. I mean, Sinclair's basic. I, Sinclair's basic sometimes outstripped Commodore's basic. But it had 
Um, the ability to do procedures. It had the ability to um, do, I mean, on go sub. Why didn't Commodore put on go sub in? Ridiculous. So, we are going to work our way through the basic. We're going to learn how to. I mean, come on, John. What does that mean? Ampersand B O O O equals two three four. Ampersand B O one equals two three four. Ampersand B O two equals two three. What does that mean? Is it a poke? Is that a, that a poke? Is that definitely a poke? Wow. <laughs> See, I've forgotten. <laughs> We'll have, see, we're going to find out what that means. Yeah, that means. So, we've got... I think we're going to have a bit of fun, yeah? Because it's a it's a different machine. I've forgotten quite a lot about it. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, I cannot find the disc with my program on it. I... Searched high and low. I bet you it's still up in my dad's loft and uh, my, pair, my folks' loft. So I've, I'm going to have to go rummaging around up there to try and find it um, to see if it's up there, or if it's even if it's on tape. Because I've got a tape. I've got a bit an official BBC tape player now that I've been playing around, messing around with. So this is what this is what this series is all about: is to run through the user manual because it's got loads and loads of examples in there you do peaks and pokes in the ASM instead yeah you could do um, and work his way through it and try and then see if we can make a game or something I mean this was a bank account system um, oh look at this I still still can't spell. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh, how many of those were in here? I'm glad I didn't get mocked down on spelling, I tell you. Oh. Did it did this have the grade on it? No. Cut out A level project June nineteen eighty five. Oh, reminiscing, reminiscing. But we could type this all in as part of what we're doing. Is you know, we could type this in and see what damage it does us and all that. So the question is, um, well, that's why I put the assembly code in, mate, because the teacher couldn't understand the assembly. I mean, there was a lot in in. If my memory serves me right, I did a lot of it in ASM. All the f I did all the f uh, f all the record handling in assembly so it was talking to the disc and all that and I was told I'd got to do it in basic so I had to redo it but they allowed me to put a little bit of machine code in but the machine code only did the front screen the title screen so um, yeah so there are many assemblers out there sorry there are many emulators out there now the one I'm going to be using so if you want to follow along the one I'm going to be using is BBEM. This. Yeah. The problem is, I don't know if there is a Linux version of the same product. I do not know. Yeah, I tried to OCR this, mate, but the, the text was too faint. 
the text was too faint for it to um, understand, so I ended up with more errors than than I had positive. It's because if you, I've got the original. I mean, the originals up there, the original printouts up there. But when you look at it, it's it's really really faint. No, this was maxed out on contrast. Same with this. This was. I mean, this this has a better hit of uh, being OCR'd, but this one, the the the, the ink is really faded and I had to mess around with the contrast just to get it this good. Oh, is there a BBM for the Linux system? Well, well, well. And it's the same one, is it? Nice, we're okay. So there's a Linux option. Now, I have a video out, out there, that allows, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll have another blash at it. Uh, I don't know if there's a... I know... Right. I know someone did a bare metal BBC emulator for the Raspberry Pi. So... Is someone being murdered downstairs? Can you hear the telly? Can you hear the telly? <laughs> Uh, it's the other half she's watching, I think, called the midwife, I think. So probably someone's having a baby. <laughs> anyway. So, I'm going to use this emulator. Yeah, and the beauty of this... No, not tonight, she's not. We, while we was on holiday, we dug a big hole. We made a, a, a slime farm. Um, so I'm going to use this. But I have got a video in my YouTube channel. Now, uh, Microman found it. Where it, you can emulate also the Turbo MMC system. Yeah. So... I've got the Turbo MMC system on here as well, so let me fire it up. Oops, star. Keep hitting the wrong star. Go on. Hello. You're supposed to be there. Thank you. Oh, need to fire. Need probably need to reset it. Hang on. Right. Is it just normal F12? Okay. It was working earlier. Ugh. Let me save it. Restart it. Right. It says it's running. Right. There we go. So this 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 system. No, cat is for just the disc. This is the um, this is the M Turbo MMC system. Yeah. So on this system, on this system, it allows you to have five hundred and twelve discs on a memory card. So as you can see, there's three hundred eighty six discs on this system. So. You know, you could, um, let's see, uh, let's see what we've got. 
Oh, keep forgetting the star. Oh. Keep forgetting what commands are. Hang on. What? It, oh, D discs. So as you can see, I have got four. We've got four discs available to us. So there's only one um, disc that's got a mount in it. So we should be able to do. There you go. So that. So we're currently on drive zero. Now to change drive, I think we go drive one. Now this. Yeah. So let me. It's D in, D in. So which one I was going to do? Which one was I going to do? Oh, 401. So start D in 401. So that's going to mount that disc now into the drive that we're in, which is drive one. So then we should be able to do that. So there you go. So this is assembler tools. Don't know how to use them, but this is assembler tools. So... Ah. There we go. So drive one now has disc 401 mounted. And it allows you to... <laughs> you, have a <laughs> you have a cat. And it allows you to mount four discs out of out of the 500 and summer. And you can create discs that you're on there. Now, I've got a video out there. Um, hang on. Let me see if I can find it in Discord. Because that's where it'll be. All Things BBC. That's where it was, wasn't it, Microman? That's where you put it. There it is. Right. There you go. So this is a very old, <laughs> a very old video. Oh my God, 2018. That was a long time ago. Um, but oh, am I? Is, am I? Well, let me turn the sound off. So, this shows you how to set up and how it works, look. You know, so we have got... <laughs> Before the world ended. <laughs> but this, this, this is explaining how Turbo MMC works. And I think, oh yeah, so I've got the links in there. Oh, how to set it up. That's alright. Everything should be in there. And I go through some of the commands in there. I got myself in a bit of a mess as well. Because I remember deleting one of the in, um, things. So, if you want to look at that video, if you want to look at that video to, to see, if you want the Turbo MMC stuff, look at that video, and you can set up the emulator to do it, right? But when we're doing, when we're doing the um, development, I turn it off because to make it work, you create the SS, you create the SSD, then you have to mount it in Turbo MMC to use it. So I turn it off when I'm doing the development, so I want to be able to link to it straight away. Right, but just to show you, if I close this, I've also got this, which is... Now this is the editor, which I show, I think, in the video. So here's the MMC system. So we've there you go. So there's 510 available discs in the catalogue. Yeah. So these are free. 
these are free. So anything that's got a name against it are um, discs that have been mounted inside that volume, yeah? And then all the rest of them are free, where you can do what you like with it. And the beauty of this system is you can drag an SSD into the... Let me see if I can find one. Um, do, 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 do. Let's find one. No cost. What's no cost? Uh, da -da -da. Right, BBC, BBC, BBC. As you can see, I've got loads and loads of books. So, oh, there, there's ASM utils. There's base it. Have we got base it in there? No, we'll use that. Right? So, yeah, it's what the Turbo MMC stuff or the emulator version of it. If you're wanting the turb if you're wanting the emulator version of MMC, it's free. All the DLLs are on my Google Drive. In fact, they're not, they're in GitHub. In fact, they're not, they're in GitHub. Uh where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Sure, there we go. There we go. BB BBM Turbo MMC. So you've got the you've got the files to be able to um, set up the emulator to be able to run MMC, and the work to get the the volume itself. Yeah, um, it's on Star Dot. Um, Oh, what's it called? Oh, beeb.mmb, that's it. There you go. So, oh, it's been updated, look. And someone's put their own version on it. So here is here is where you can get the volumes, right? There you go. So that is where you can get the, the, the actual volume with all the discs in. So it looks like um, there's some different versions out there, yeah? But the beauty of this editor, it allows you to mount. So I should be able to mount that. Let's see, mount that into 315. There we go. That is now added to 315. So I can, should be able to. What what did I call it? Oh, base, ed, base edit. Oh, I've got to unlock it, am I? It's locked. Disabled. There we go. That should now refresh and it should have a title on it. There we go. It's got a title on it now. And this allows you to build up your own personal volume. So if you've got if you've got SSDs all over the place like I have, because this is full of them. You know, these are all the these are all the programs, and I've got the S. These are all the books, and I've got the SSDs with them, um, and stuff like that. And so, like the the advanced guide. Here's the um, advanced BBC user guide. 
but the one that we are using is this one here because that's the SSD so that's all the programs within the user guide so if you want to turbo MMC your emulator look at that video that I put in the link because that's me explaining how to do it and then how to use it but if you want to um, if you don't want to do it you just have it like this where it's just the native and then you can just drag an SSD onto it or something like load drive zero uh, da, 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 da. wanna go there So I could do, just mount that advanced user guide SSD and then do star dot. Oh, I need to F12, don't I? There you go. So it's got, so we can load, you know, page 17. And then do list. Whatever that does. Oh, that's got some inline code. Look, it's got some inline assembly code in there. <laughs> oh, and that's just assembled it. Nice. Nice. So it's up to you how you want to do it. I'm not sure if the Turbo MMC system will work inside of the Unix one, the, the Linux one. Only you guys will be able to tell me if that works. But we're going to be doing most of it on the uh, emulator. But I will be firing up the the Beasties and we'll be running it on proper hardware. So what I wanted to do was load up. The, user, the actual user guides and start learning how to use the, <laughs> the uh, is there a way to squirt it from the B PC to BBC um I'm not sure mate. I mean I what I've what I've been doing to squirt it onto the hardware, I've been mount I've been mounting it into uh, the my Beeb MMB and then put the SD card into the BBC. That's how I've been doing it. It's a bit of faff, but it's it works. Um MMB imager was that was not in the video. Wasn't it? Wasn't it not? Oh, do, 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 do. I, th I think. I think that was just the um, the emulator setup. Hang on, I think there's another one as well. Uh, 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 cool. I made a lot of videos. <laughs> Look at this. Install here. Yeah, this this is the one. Installing Turbo MMC. That's the one. Cause look, that's the that's the beast. That's the the beast down there. Because. Yeah, so that's where the cable is. And then I go into how to use it. Do I not do I not go into setting up the beep? No, I don't. Oh, defender that didn't work.
So there's that, but that's actually installing the hardware. But I am sure... I'm sure I did one where... Where I explained it. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I remember recording it, but it was so rubbish I didn't publish it. Maybe I need to do a... Oh, look, there's my boxing, unboxing of my Model A. Hey, <laughs> God, dear. Right. Let's get back on track. Uh, and now I've got Electron, but it's bust. It broke. I was really annoyed because I just bought myself uh, an SD drive emulator and then it popped and burnt, it burnt, it popped. I think it's, I think it's the UL, ULA chip gone because all I get is black and white stripes on the screen now. Right, so, um, MMB Imager, where's that? Yeah. Oh, someone's put it in GitHub. Nice. Nice. Good lad. Good lad. Well, there you go. You can get the MMB imager from there. Well spotted, Microman. Did he put the other one in there? I wonder if it's that one, the disk manager. Oh, no. <laughs> What's an exe file? <laughs> right, I'm gonna hang on. Let's follow him. Right. That's why it's not available anymore. But there is another file that allows you to, um, you know, DFS imager. So this, it allows you to open a, a single SSD. So, uh, da -da -da. where are we? Where am I? Oh, there. Uh, Ebooks. BBC Micro. Let's find an SSD. User guide SSD. There you go. So you can actually look at it. And you can look to actually look at a, a file. And you can sort of work out how the basic structured. So if you can if you can find the DFS imager, that's the other. But that comes as part of this. Um, because if you open, like say, if you open an image, so let's look, there's that games one that, that was on the video with all the games on it. You can double it one of the discs, then it will open up the, you know, the file DFS imager. So that is, this is the emulator I'm going to use to learn oops, to learn base um, the BBC stuff we're also going to be I can't oh no I haven't opened it up yet have I? Da -da 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 -da. we need to be in there I think so we should have the user guide somewhere here new that's the advanced one user guide it's a new one it's a new one is that the new one yes this is the new one so what's happened is is 
some people on the star dot forum have actually typed back in the entire user guide all 522 pages right because this book is immaculate there is no way this is scanned this has got to have been typed in so now <laughs> aquafin's gone 500 pages most of it is you know we can skip the parts one and two you know variables we can skip because we know what a variable is the only difference between let's get that over here um, make it fit do that do that there we go so you should be able to see that okay yeah so variables you know a equals 10 or 20 run no such variable in line 50 that is because we didn't do that right so ah oh, does this still work no <laughs> you have to do it properly there we go 10 so as in Commodore basic is it P oh thank you mate thank you mate that deserves Oh, I forgot what the command is. Ah. There you go, mate. So, variables the same as the Commodore. Now, the Commodore, you could, on, you could only, and let me get myself in the right window, where you go BB equals 20. Yeah, so when you run it, uh, run. No such variable. Oh, BB, that's it. It was only two characters. Yeah. Now, so. Yes, this is where I was going, just about to get to. But the BBC allows you to have proper, proper variable names. So you could have 30 uh, start of screen equals like that and then run it. <laughs> so the BBC Basic Interpreter allows you to have <coughs> variable names that actually mean something. Yeah, I don't know how to get in lowercase. I don't know how to get it in lowercase. Aha! Got it, got it, got it, got it. problem is all the commands have to be in uppercase yeah so remember that but you could do this you could do that but that won't work because what am I missing? Um, ah. <laughs> right, so we should be able to do 
print what is John dollar. There you go, John is great. So, variables now are meaningful. They are not X, Y, X, X, Y, Y, Z, Z, Y, uh, Z, Y. Or you could do it in Commodore Basic where people typed in background equals six. But all it did was just assign six to BA. So you wasted all those characters for nothing. Yes. Well, we'll get on to that when we get into the advanced stuff. So we have got, as you can see there, a dollar sign, like in the Commodore Basics and like in all the other Basics, means it's a string variable. A uh, late string, uh, a variable name on its own is a floating point. And of course, you've got uh, percent which is just a number. So, just like with a... Yes. No, there's there's no barrier for the <laughs> variable names. I don't think there's a bar barrier. I've never come across one. It'd be interesting to see if there is one. I mean, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 there. 13. But you've got the... You think it's 16? Maybe it says in here. I don't know. Does it say... Well, I mean, 16 character variable names is long enough, I think. <laughs> but they are, they are how, so it's exactly the same as the Com Commodore Basics, uh, the ZX Spectrum Basic, the Atari Basic, but you, allow, you can have long um, names for the variables. Yeah, long enough with 32k RAM. Because you've got to remember, right? As soon as we start using any sort of graphics mode, your 32k of RAM shrinks rapidly. Um, I'm not too sure how much memory mode zero takes. But we'll find out. So, yeah, it takes a lot. So, um... Remember that the longer the variable name, longer the variable name, the more bytes you take of 32k. So every time you reference it, you know, like their start of screen, you're taking there. There's a table in the map. Yeah, it's probably in the back pages, mate, of this. Um, let's have a look. I mean, how, how often do you get manuals where you can just look at the electronics? Here we go. So, the move, dynamic variable storage movable boundary. Right. Where's the... Uh, Characters. Oh, we'll have to see. Um, we'll have to see. Where's mode? In string mod. Mode. Here we go. Um. Oh, it doesn't say. Doesn't say, but anyway. So 
So this is the book we're going to be using. Now for all the patrons, all the books that I'm using are in the patron Google Drive. Along with the, S the accompanying SSD. Uh, S SSD. So you can load the SSD into your emulator. Now if any of you don't want to install an emulator on your computer, which I understand, you're lucky there is one online. Um, I can't remember, it's uh, BJS I think or something like that. Oh, I can't remember what it was called. There we go. One emulator online. There you go. So if you don't want to install an emulator and you just want the standard BBC functionality, there is an online version that allows you to do almost everything. It doesn't do, allow you to do all the sideways RAM stuff, but you can you can upload your um, SSD files. So if you've got an SSD file that you want to uh, upload, like if we do the BBC user guide, there you go, and then we do star dot. Ooh. Star. We're star. Oh, we're star. Aha! Found it. There you go. That's that drive I've just uploaded. Yeah? So we could load clock. Please and supply the day, month, and year as a number. Okay, so day is five, month is five, year is two thousand two one. Oh, this will be fun. Will it accept it? What's what is the current time? Uh, twenty one, twenty six. Yeah, he accepted it. Oh wow. No length limit, just made 120 characters long. Wow. So, there is many ways that you can join in, yeah? There's this, where you can upload the SSD and use it online. Or you could install it on your Windows PC or Linux. But guys, you'll have to let me know, alright? I have downloaded the code for this because I was curious how they wrote it in JavaScript. <laughs> I mean, it was, it's impressive that they wrote it in JavaScript. No, it worked. Look, the BBC could handle Y2K. Isn't it nice? <laughs> so, we are going to... We're going to try and learn all the different... Commands. I mean, it, I mean, it's got it's got envelopes and stuff like that. Which, it, when I was looking, I was thinking, oh, music. I don't like music. So, um, right. Let's get to the good stuff. So we've talked about variables where we can, and as Andy says, you can have whatever name you want. Uppercase, lowercase. Makes no difference. And it envelope is an email command. Is it? It's not. No, it ain't. That's sound. I know that. You're lying. Anyway, so. Are oh, you messing around to see how big the variable names can get? Good, good, good. For envelope. 
email wasn't in the BBC vocabulary. I'd be impressed if it was. Use define keys. Where's the basic commands? Here we go. Page 19. I don't see it on page 19. Anyway. So. Different page numbers. You got the one off my Google Drive. You got that one? Because I think that's the new one. Chapter 3, Intro to Variables. Yeah, you can't do that. You can't put a space in variable. That would fall over. Oh, variable names should not begin with basic keywords like print or let. Da -da 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 -da. However, it is quite permissible to start a variable name with lower cases. Yeah. Yeah. So, now we understand that <laughs> straight away right this basic is far better than the Commodore basic because we can have proper proper names for variables but <laughs> but you've got to remember the bigger the name and the more you times you use that variable, the more space you take. So you do find out that we we slowly creep back to the one and two characters for variables. I mean, I did it. I did it in my project. Where is it? I did it in my project, I think. Where are we? Here we go. There we go. There's a list of all variables. <laughs> and the two characters. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, I've got a couple of big ones, you know, credit, balance, people, state, delete, printer. Well, that's it. <laughs> oh. Right, and so the program constraints are exactly the same as in the Commodore. So you start with a line number. Like there, let's do this one. Repeat 20 print give me a number 30 input B 40 print
Good, eh? Oh, and I had to put... Oh, that really annoys me, that does. Rats. Whatever you do, don't hit the star key on your number pad. <laughs> you end up with that thing in it. Let's do that. Right. I'm going to cheat here. Voila! So, if you didn't see what I just did then, I've just copied and pasted it straight in. Give me a number. Six. Six. Twelve sixes. Yep. Yeah. So it's the same same constraints as any other 8-bit basic. So it's line number, command, and then go on. So you have to have line numbers. So you've got to be careful. Do I list 07? Do I list 07? Do a list 07? What do you mean do a list 07? Oh. No, it worked. Got syntax there. I don't know what you, what you, what's going on. It should indent. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. It's not little though, is it? No. We'll find it. No, it won't let you do that. Like that. No, won't let you do it. We'll, f we'll get there, mate. We'll get there. We'll find it. It's got to be in here somewhere. Working on it. Come on. You can do it. Working on it. There we go. There you go, mate. There you go. Yes. But it doesn't use any extra, extra, any more space in memory, because all it is is the lister that's putting the indentation in. Which is pretty cool. I mean, 60. Let's put the let's put end in there. 
So that should bring it back. There we go. So it's actually the lister of the BBC Basic that's doing the indentation. We're not taking any more memory. That is just that doing it. Yeah. But the thing is, you see, um, when QBasic came out in, what was it, 19... I think it was 1990, QBasic, the very first version of it. Not the quick, not quick basic, but Q basic. It was the one after GW basic, I think it was. They robbed quite a lot of the basic commands out of here, because it's amazing how they introduced procs and stuff like that in the Q basic edit uh, system. Yes, it did suck, <laughs> but for the likes of me back then that just spent like £2,000 on a PC, like a 386SX, getting QBasic for free was brilliant. I did a lot of stuff in QBasic before I migrated onto QuickBasic. Yeah, they probably robbed, they probably robbed a lot of this, Microsoft probably robbed quite a lot out of the BBC Basic Interpreter because it was the best. That it was undoubtedly the the most command rich basic interpreter that was out there. It you could do a lot. It was just a pity that the machine was so expensive. Yeah, yeah, but you know. What corporations now code in C on its own? It's not many. I mean, my, I'm being asked to learn Node.js, and now it's just been announced, announced that they're moving away from Microsoft SQL Server, and they're going to was it Post, Postgres, Postgres SQL, Progress, Progress SQL, Postgres SQL, yeah, that they're going to that. So everything that we've written for SQL Server is now going to have to be converted. It, oh, it's free. Oh, that's why they're moving to it. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Because what I... Because... I looked at it and because it's open source, I thought, I wonder if you can do it for the Raspberry Pi. And there is a Rabbi Pi version. Yeah, it's open source. So, but you can't, there's a, a Raspberry Pi version. So, it's going to get, oh, the light's on. It's going to get installed on my bot. And so, instead of, instead of using uh, JSON as my database, I'm going to, I'm going to get the bot to interface with a, pro there, there. Um, I'm gonna get it to. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put. Po Postgres SQL on it, and then put make the bot interface with that using SQL. So it's all gonna be a database on there instead of a JSON file. So the bot's gonna get a bit more. Bit more. Uh, more cleverer rather than just reading a JSON file. Their logo is an elephant. Yeah. Oh, someone's turned the light off. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is an elephant. So, but that's you know, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to learn that. I, I'm a Microsoft SQL Server person. You know, I've been for many years since SQL Server Seven. Um, oh, <clears throat> maybe six point five. Yeah, SQL six point five. Oh, that's taking myself back. Yeah, I know the, I know SQL is SQL is SQL. You're six point five certified. Um, I'm twenty. I'm two thousand certified. Yeah, I'm two thousand certified. 
Um, but we don't use 2000 anymore. <laughs> but it it's all the same. Anyway, but yeah, so that's going to get that database engine installed. I'm going to check, I'm going to code the bot to use it because that's the way I'm going to learn. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, the bot and everything else is going is is being is being used as my learning thing for Node.js. Now this SQL Server engine. Um. <laughs> Let's turn the fan back on. <laughs> I it is going to do more stuff than that. By the way, I, I've got to I've got to I'm trying to figure out how to. Do you know the overlays you put on the screen? I want that to be able to tell an overlay what to do something. I've got plans, but I'm, I'm trying to... You're trying to annoy me with the sound. Can't, you can't hear it. Listen. You're hearing the telly. That is quite... That is silent, that fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the one next to it, yeah. <laughs> so I'm learning things that for work, for 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 work, but I'm using them for here, yeah. So that, I've got two fans. Well, I've got four really. Two dogs, my son. <laughs> <laughs> anyway right now one downside of the BBC micro right this is the downside it is not a full screen editor which is was so annoying after using a Vic 20 a Commodore pet Commodore pet and the C64 that allowed you to do full screen editing BBC Micro doesn't do it. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. It won't do it. Which is an absolute pain up the backside. And what you have to do... So... How do we put this back? Is it oh, oh? No, it can't be. Oh, it's, there's no, it's that in it. There we go. No? <laughs> Can't do it. Oh, reset the computer, yeah. Oh, I'm not doing F12. F that's a, another thing. Don't press F12 because you lose your program. You think it puts the space in the editor? Old. See, old. Yeah, the old program was bad. Yeah, if you press F12, right, so that's in there. Program's gone. There we go. So. Oh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, full screen editing. <laughs> it's new to you. Full screen editing. The only way you could do any sort of editing was you had to, there was this marker cursor. So as soon as you press the arrow keys, 
you could move the cursor to where you need it to, which is there, and then you had to copy the line. So, and then when you got to the point, you stopped, make your change, and then copy the rest of it, then press enter. That's how you would do editing in the BBC Micro, which was annoying because full screen editing is was the thing and that is, <clears throat> yeah. Well, let's just say, out of the screen editors, you've got the best which are the Commodores, yeah? You can't be a full screen editor. Was the Atari a full screen editor? I can't, I, I've not played on an Atari. I, I've got a suspicion it was. Then you've got the ZX Spectrum, which wasn't. But that one, you had to press the arrow up and arrow down. It come at the bottom of the screen, doesn't it? The line came up at the bottom of the, the screen and then you edit it. So you had to physically move up and down. This one, at, at least here. Yeah, edit. Um, yeah, that, that also. Because the Dragon was a full screen editor as well, wasn't it? Was the Dragon a full screen editor? Because that wasn't that a rebranded TRS? No, no. Microsoft Basic, yeah. So that's how you edit um, on a BBC. There is no full screen editing. Um, annoying. Especially when you come from a Commodore background, so it was a bit of a sh culture shock when you co when you went to school and you played on the BBC. Oh, I can't move my cursor. No, it wasn't a clone, but it was similar. Yeah. So that's one of the downsides. But other than that, oh, this this is another one. When you, if, <laughs> if you're like me and end up with a, a, a basic program that, you know, you've done 10, 20, 30, 40, and then you've been modifying, so you've got 11 and 14 and 16 on the Commodore, you couldn't, you couldn't um, renumber. You had to buy that program as a cartridge to do it. Or as I did it, I wrote my own. Um, BBC have it already in here. So if you can type renumber, I think we could do 100 comma 10. Oh, am I thinking? Oh, I'm thinking the Commodore, aren't I? It's renumber. So renumber, renumbers it. So if we put a line in at 11, So we've got a line in Everett, you can renumber and it renumbers and it allows you to do. I thought, but I, I, I I'm not, I wasn't sure if I was getting myself mixed up with um, the Commodore renumber because that has got start line interval, isn't it? Um, Yeah, I can't even get the help. Yeah, so you got your you got your start. No, you can't you can't do an interval, no. <laughs> but this is where the this is where 
the BBC Basic interpreter was better than the Commodore one because it allowed, it was more, it was much more friendlier. Hang on, let's make sure that that's right. <coughs> right, we'll forget recording to cassette because we haven't got an actual machine. We've got virtual drives. Comma. Okay. Bingo. There we go. Well done, matey. You can earn some serious points here, here mate. There you are. You can earn some serious points doing this. But it, the, the basic interpreter, I mean list. Ooh, I'm typing in the wrong place. <laughs> uh, so, 100, 300. Yeah, so as the Commodore was a dash, you know, list 100 dash 300 or something, you have to put a comma for, for doing listing. Right. Oh. Polygon. This is where it gets interesting. No, do I? I'm not going to. I'll copy and paste that in. Let's copy that in. Copy that in. Right, that should be in. There we go. Yeah, yeah. With because this has been done from scratch, right? Because this has been done from scratch, um, it's not a scanned in. The guys actually typed it back in and made it look like the a real thing. But the beauty of it is you can copy and paste. You can grab it and paste it like I've just done. Right, so let's see what this thing does, shall we? Pretty colours! Nah. Ooh. Mode seven. Let's put it back. There we go. That's better. So we are going to eventually we're going to understand what VDU nineteen comma one comma one comma one does because I use that. I use that. Don't I? Where was it? Where was it? Oh, was it in the graphic part? Where's the graphic part? Print statement, no. Delete account, no. Examine graphics, here we go. Look, it's there. So I'm using mode five, and then I'm doing mode 19, one comma five, and 19. Is it the color palette? Right, yeah, there are thirty. There are thirty-three now. I know one. One still springs to mind. I think that's VDU twenty-three. And I think VDU twenty-three is redefining a character. I think. Don't quote me on that until we get there. But somewhere in there, VDU twenty-three is coming. To, coming to. Well, I'm. I'm <laughs> my my librarian is digging back into the art. <laughs> and um and trying to and, and trying to remember what I did. <laughs> but I am I am VDU twenty three is redefine a character. Oh, are you impressed or what? Should I give myself some ANK points? Because <laughs> I, I think I'm lagging behind here. Hang on. Oh I'm fifth. <laughs> I'm fifth.
You got no sound? Oh, Aquafin. Yeah. Hey, Arthur. How you doing? Yes. Well, that was proven in Commodore Basic as well, that integers run faster. <laughs> but the problem with Commodore Basic, it turns integers into floats when it does all its multiplication, doesn't it? <laughs> so, it, it's faster in one, sp one area and then slows down in another. Right. So we are going to find out what... So we know what mode 5 is. Right, mode 5 is just the the graphics mode. And I think I think it looks like a Vic 20, doesn't it? The characters are the size of a Vic 20. Does it? I thought they said it made it run quicker. I mean, it, it's slower in the calculations part because they have to convert it into a floating point before they can do the mathematics. So it's it's slower in the calculation part, but I thought it was quicker when it was, when it was like, um, is it 20, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 8, 9, 10, yeah, this is less than a VIC-20 screen. <laughs> Yeah, it's less than a VIC-20 screen. And it's got, it doesn't have as many colours, because I think this is only, what, four colours? So colour zero is black. Colour one is red. Two is yellow. White. Then we go back to black again. So it only has four colours. <laughs> so the Vic 20s <laughs> has got more more graphic capability in mode five than we in the, the BBC has. <laughs> oh, would you believe it? Anyway, let's go back. Yeah, so that's what these video 19 must be. So I'm wondering if it's saying redefine 1 to be 1, redefine 2 to be 4, and redefine 3 to be 3. I wonder if that's what it's saying. We'll get to the video commands. I mean, it looks like that Microman's already there. He's already, he's already gone. <laughs> 40 year old code so as you can see we can use arrays just like the Commodore can ah here's something that was far better actually telling it what, a ran what range of random number you wanted you know print random I want a random number between 0 and 256. Way hey, none of this multiply by plus one divided by malarkey or you know uh, random plus 0.5 times by whatever number you wanted. Rubbish. You tell it. Give me a number between 0 and 256. There you go. <laughs> so does does Rand give a decimal? Okay, let's find out. Yes it does. Look at that. Look at 
Look at that. Can I set a seed? Don't know. We'll find out when we get there. <laughs> Your brain working, Andy. <laughs> So, that same random command generates the seed. Oh, right, okay. So, that's saying I want a number between 0 and 1200, 0 and 1000. Ooh, VDU29. Hmm. I wonder if that's setting the screen size. Or is that setting the start point? Hmm. <laughs> That's what he said. That's what he said. It's there in chat. It's there in chat. So radius, so that's here. So moving. So that's so this is the high res so is so moving from radius to zero and then moving ten ten. God I'm wondering if that sets a window. VDU twenty nine. Oh getting ahead of ourselves here. Graphics colour. That that has got to be set in background and foreground surely mode 7 uh, mode 5 g color 1 comma 2 no well i don't know what that's doing oh it's the graphic color all oh, right okay Um, is it plot? Well, we'll get there. We'll get there. So we've got cosine. Oh, is the angle? Is the angle? Oh, the angle's in radians. What a shame. Yeah, move and draw. So move, draw. Hello. Hello. <laughs> they can't see you. Hello. Right. The program clears the circle first and fills it with a pattern. All right, okay. A dog streamer, yeah. Streamer bomb. Is that what they call it? Like photo bomb. So clears out and then draws one. So this is so random number of sides. Sides, that must be up here. Yeah, random number of sides. <laughs> so 310 sets the draw color at random color. Ah, see, okay. So they're saying change it to four. That means you get a black one. So what's this? Oh, this sets f. This sets function keys. Yeah, that's another one, isn't it? Right. Okay. Star key zero. We are going to make it do a list uh, M is enter. Right, so if I press that one. Oh, what's zero? Was there an F zero? One.
F1. There we go. Now it's defined F1 to, to list. Key zero is definitely break. That's F12, isn't it? Ooh. Is it definitely going to go ahead, the, the launch? Well, I'm not going to hit break, but F1, F1's done. We've redefined F1, so that's what key does. So we could we could do what that's doing by saying key nine is run M. So M's enter. So if I press F9, there we go. Go, oh, it's the simple things. So what is this? So this is monthly. What does this do? Oh, and if it draws a graph. All right, let's copy this then. Come on. Come on. There you go. Come on. There we go. Any more? Let's paste this in. Let's see what this does. Nice. Hey. <laughs> well, I've got I got 7 of them. <laughs> so, I mean, you can I, I, I I don't, the problem is you're in Canada, aren't you? So I bet the deli the postage would be enormous. But there are some out there. You have to be careful though, because you know, like I say, um, the cheaper ones they go, oh, it doesn't. We we haven't tested it, so you, you run the risk. But more than likely, the ones, the ones that I, I mean, I've only had one that didn't work, and that was because. I think it was um, the video chip had failed. So that's that's, that's used as spares. And I've actually used it because I've had to take one of the, the VIA chips out and put it in that machine because it blew. Um, but all the rest of them, I mean, all the, the, except for me dad's, um, all the rest of them didn't work, and they only did the, they didn't work because the power the power supply had blown its capacitors. And you and I, I did three videos about how to fix it, and it's uh, I think it's four five capacitors you have to change. Um, and I just and and I just took the power supply out, took it a bit, changed, uh, did a really bad soldering job on it. As I got lots of comments on those three videos saying how, oh, <laughs> you know, um, I nearly burnt myself one time, I think it was, and uh, I think the soldier iron fell on the floor. <laughs> the underscore, underscores blinking. Yeah, that's where the cursor is. Because the program's finished, look. Program's finished, so it's where the cursor is. So we are Who is who is Jason? <laughs> you are Well well I never yeah you're right <laughs> Who is Jason? I get what you mean now. I get what you mean. <laughs> Oh, you mean this up down here? Yeah, it's a good point. Not sure.
Yeah, the Jason months. <laughs> I'm not sure, to be honest. It could be. It could be. Anyway. So we are going to, in, in the episodes that are coming, we're going to look at the command, uh, these commands. I mean, look at all these. I mean, it does a square root. It does a square root. What is your number? You are that can't be doing it that quick. Hang on. Let's just make sure that that's right. All right, six, seven, six, eight, five, six, eight, five, six. Square root. Can I do it? Come on. Square root. Well, I never. It is bang on. Absolutely bang on. To, f to the three decimal places, bang on. <laughs> BBC used the M1 chip. I mean, that was an even bigger number. But it's running at two. If you think about it, it's running at two megahertz. I mean, this is this is not. This is running at its normal speed. Look, yeah. So it's running at normal speed one. So this is running at two megahertz. Well, they, the company sort of invented the M1 chip, didn't it? Because it's based on ARM architecture. But yeah, the the CPU, the C, the the CPU in the PVC was a two megahertz chip. It ran at two megahertz. Um, so it was twice as fast as the any of the Commodores. And that's why, I mean. You know, Defender and was so good on the BBC. So good. What's this? Background. So we are going to. Ah, here we go. Double height. This has got some embedded assembly in it. Let's have a bit of this. Right, let's see what this is doing. So VDU28, I have no idea what VDU28 is. Whip 36, hmm, see what it does. Right, okay, with the basic program, between the two brackets, which enables you to type in double height on the screen, okay. Even lists in big, big mode as well. 
Right, so what is it doing? What is it doing? So it is. Right, so it's. Okay, so it's. Oh! What's this doing? So I presume that's putting it at 100. Let's see, is it calling 100? Hmm. So that's jumping to here. Is it definitely, is it just storing 100 bytes in a variable? And then, uh, then assembling into that variable? Yeah. It's very clever, because then it protects your, it, it protects your basic, doesn't it? That you're assembling into an array. It's very clever. Yeah. So this this is cre this is creating an array for prog of a hundred entries, and then it's assembling into it. So we're loading eight D, and then it's going JSR right. So what's right? Oh, it's this. Cool. We'd have to. We'd have to. I've got to understand all this. I. I mean, that's an and. But I'm, is that peaking that number and then anding it with that? I wonder if that's peak. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So that's doing, so that's, that's saying that that, that's doing a go sub to that. But there you go, there's an, a, there is a quick, there is a quick assembly program, right, there's a quick uh, assemble, uh, machine code program in basic that has been assembled here look so this is the end result of the assemble and then they've called it right at the very end here yeah And now we've got double sized characters. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, that's got to be good. Right, giving the computer instructions. Auto, renum, delete, re, remen number. 
Right, delete. So this is deleting a range of lines. So we know we know that. Renumber. Ah, here we go. Nine hundred comma one hundred. You can also put on multiple comma. Yeah, we know that using the colon. Introduction to graphics. All oh, right. What's the same four colors? All oh, right. Okay. Oh, he's still doing it, look. <laughs> Hang on. Right. Right, colour. Um, let's do 129. Ah. Okay. So if we do colour. Uh, so red, one, two, nine is red. Oh, right, I wonder if we can do this. Ah, there we go, red and yellow. No, okay. Go cool, that's a bit potent. Right. Yeah, it was a bit potent, that was, wasn't it? Graphics. So they are, oh, right, so the graphics part, the graphics system starts like I did with my graphics package. It starts with zero in the bottom corner down here and goes that way. Okay. So let's do this then, shall we? Mode. Let's do modes, mode one. There we go. To move without drawing, do move. Okay. Move 1000 comma zero. And then draw 1000 comma 1000. Ah, okay. So we moved from that point there down to there and then drew a line up to there. Nice. Right, draws black lines, draw red lines, okay. So draw 800 come 800. <laughs> nice. So that's what G, what's the, what's the zero for though? The first is normally zero. The se oh, right, okay. The first is normally zero. Okay. Windows. At the moment, the whole screen can be used for text. Oh, is it pen? The whole right. At the moment, the whole screen can be used for text, and the and the whole screen can be used for graphics. In some modes, e.g., mode five, you can restrict to specify a window or section of the screen. In modes without graphics, three, six, and seven, only the text windows can be used. Right, imagine that you want to create two windows. The left is graphic window and the right is text. Pose, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So that's this then. Okay. So we've now created a graphics window in the middle of the screen. Okay, and then we're going to create a text window. Oh, right, so the text window's there. So colour 129. So that's the text window. Uh, okay. And then 
do G col 0 upon 130 CLS oh CLG and there's the graphics window right Well, that's interesting. So you can't do that on the 64, can you? Separate your screens out. <laughs> does it keep it? Oh yeah, it does, doesn't it? What else is there? Mode 24. Oh, oh, 24. Oh, that's there, yeah. Okay, let's see what this does. That was silly. Hello. Yeah, that is so true, mate. That is so true. Alright, what does this do? Alright, so there's the example of a graphics area in a text area. So we're printing, we're printing, but we're not stating where, we're just saying print line. And it's printing it in this defined text area as this is the defined graphics area and so all the lines are being drawn within that area clever it's a bit of a pain though because if i do a list <laughs> i have to put it back well we know about variables String variables, yeah, we know about that. Yep. Numbers and letters stored in the computer. Oh, look at that. We can store, okay. So 10, A equals ampersand F E. print a well 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 look at that you can actually assign a no a hex value to a variable uh, can you could you do binary that'd be interesting how would you do binary? I wonder if it's that. No. So there's the Rangers. Mm, that's bigger than a Commodore integer, isn't it? So you're saying it's that? No. Oh, I've left left the left the. Uh, that in no way well I never can assign a binary that's <laughs> That's got to be worth something there, mate. Aquafin's going to have to... Uh... <laughs> it's going 
going to have to be easy. <laughs> Oh, he's lagging behind now. Oh, I mean, I've only got 12 points. 32-bit. Yeah, it looks like it. I mean, um... Let's see. Um, B equals... 0, 1, 1, 1. Let's do that. Yeah, it's definitely 32 bit. Isn't it? Let's. Uh, Now, so it can't be 32 bit, so it's got to be. Let's try 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's try that first. Oops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. We'll have to see what the constraints are for that. Oh. So is that, that's peaking that value and putting it in? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Mistake. <laughs> Gotta be, mate. Gotta be. You made a mistake, mate. You got it. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Ashes double, yeah. Uh, uh, is, yeah. We'll find it. It's in here somewhere. We'll find it. Oh, there's the modes. So mode zero is eight characters. So it is. So mode three. Okay, mode one is Commodore screen. Okay. See, look, I'm famous, look. Right, here we go. On the BBC Micro, this uh, alt altering the width of the field in a way which numbers are printed. Ah, oh, okay. It's 
on the BBC Micro, this can be done by setting a special variable called at, per, at percentage in a particular way. For the moment, this must be treated as a bit of magic. But for example, if we write that, uh, then this statement tells the computer to print a field nine characters wide and that the number will be printed with a fixed number of decimal places. In this case, two. Okay. So it's nine characters wide. So that must be that distance from there to there and then two decimal places. For more technical minded, the app is made up of the number parts. It means hexadecimal format number two fixed half uh, two fixed number or decimal places, two decimal places and nine characters. So this must be the format. So what other formats are there? Oh, it only does. Oh, here we go. Format 1 gives the figure as an exponent. Format 2 gives it as a fixed number to decimal places. Format 0 is the normal configuration. Yeah. Yeah. But it was good that it you, you could specify... How it print how it printed the numbers out. You know, you've got no way of doing that in Commodore Basic. You have to do all that left and right jiggery pokery. I mean Oh no we don't have do we have tab? We do have tab. We just didn't have print at. That was it. This tab XY. We don't have that. Don't have that. What's that doing? H print to a few sums. What are thirty two characters? All oh, right, H or oh, H two. So it looks like H two. <laughs> yeah. See, we couldn't do that in Commodore either. The neater way of achieving the same effect is by replacing line 50. So 50 plot 0, comma, 0, comma, minus 16. All right. Possible launch in 35 minutes. All right, cool. Right. What I'm going to do is, it's coming up to 11, and I want to see the launch. If you want to, if you want to follow along, get the emulator installed, or like I say. I'm not sure if the um, <coughs> excuse me. I'm not sure if the JSB allows you to copy and paste into the screen. Let's have a look. No, doesn't let you do. Oh, hang on. Paste text or drop files. All right, paste text. Get in there. Get in there. There you go. So you can actually do it in there as well. You have to do all that.
pasting into so let's do something else um, let's do that so you have to paste it into there Nice, so that so you can, so we can, you can use the um, the online version if you want to mess around with the programs. Let's find a big. Yeah, I was just about to say, let's find a big, big program. Um... Here we go, this'll do. So, we'll just, uh, we'll just do this. Because we, we don't want to copy the, the page number across. Let's give it let's give it a little bit of help. Right, and then we've got this bit here. Right. Select all. That's a pretty big one. Right, here we go. Right, so it didn't load a couple of lines in because maybe I was stupid enough and I'd missed them. Yes, I had missed them. So it was line 90. So we'll get it to paste line 90 back in. And also there was another one, wasn't there, that went and wrapped around. That was here. So we'll place that back in. I think that was it, I think. There's only the two I spotted. So you've got to give it a little bit of help. You've got to give it a little bit of help. But it's in there. Please enter the temperature followed by the first letter of the temperature scale. Okay. There you go. So you guys can... Telekinesis, John is thinking it. 
<laughs> it looked like that. But it allows you to take the program out of here and put it into the online version of the, the Beeb, yeah? If you don't want to install the emulator and you want to follow along. Um, it'd be interesting to... S oh, will it do that double height? Will it do that double height? That will be interesting. Let's see. Will it do the double height characters? Du, 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 du. Well, I th yeah, yeah, it would be cool if it did that. I know the, 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 the turn the sound off, you have to turn it on. But we'll try it, we'll see if we'll turn the sound on. Let's find where that program was that did the double height characters. Here it is. So we'll make sure that everything's going in. That looks right. Right, before we paste it in, can we turn the sound on? Hmm. It does, it does the dish, dish sound, right. So here we go, let's paste it in. Oh, let's make sure. I like the fact that the caps lock keeps coming off and on when it's changing. Right. Does it do it? Yeah, I mean, it, they've, they've, they've emulated it, they've emulated it pretty good. I mean, it's got, um, it's got the BBC, you know, the master, which is, I've got the 128th down there. So. You know, now you're in BBC master mode. But it gives you guys a way of playing with the BBC, yeah? So if you don't want to install the emulator, you've got another way of doing it which is online. Because what I want to do is, I want to, un I want to get, relearn what I've forgotten, for one. And then we'll see if we can create a basic games, basic game and stuff like that. Can it save? I don't think this can save, to be honest. I think it only loads. I don't think it can save. That's the only downside about this. At least with the emulator you can save. Because I don't think you can, once you've uploaded your SSD, I don't think you can get it back.
Right. I'll have to have a play and uh, get back to you on the next stream, see if it does it. If it does it by that, then that'll be good for you guys, because then you could save your program to your, your disk image. I'll have a play with this off stream, and then I'll, I'll report back. But, like I say, it's a good way... I, I think I think we're going to have some fun because one we're learning the capabilities of the VVC and eventually we're going to get to the 6502 because I haven't even got to the dev environment yet I haven't even shown you how you can develop a, an assembly program on in Windows and then send it to the emulator yeah so we got all that to come but I, I, I want I want to have something different you know we've been, we're messing around with the vic 20 with myriad we've done we we had fun when we did uh pet pet ski matrix for all the different commodore machines and i thought i wanted to try something well this is it i mean i th i you know um elite was brilliant and also um the bbc's version of um defender was outstanding i lost so many hours playing defender on the bbc at school so many hours i mean the, the 64 has a place place in my heart but the bbc you know is something that i have cherished i mean yeah but nobody really play, no one really plays streams with it so this is what i want to do and we'll and if we can do it, and then eventually get you guys to write some basic games, you know, like Shalom does with a 64. I don't, I won't have any prizes <laughs> unless I can think of something. But it's it's a way to to learn a different computer that I know that not many people are doing videos about, and. Um, and we'll get to program it in 6502 and see how it really works and see how we can mess around. Because it doesn't have sprites. It doesn't have all the the cleverness of the 64. <laughs> Four finger kick cap prize. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what we can, what we can do. I'm, I'm sure I can rustle something up. But it's just, uh, it's just to, uh, to get you guys looking at something else rather than a 64 or a VIC-20. And we'll look at it, this and we'll do more and more, more in-depth stuff on this in basic as well as... Uh, that's a bit rich. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, and if we can talk to the person who's just done the last comment, you know, we, we, we might be able to muscle him in and make a, a BBC development environment as well that in his, uh, in his software. It's just an idea. How, what's the, how's the next version coming on anyway, mate? While we're speaking of CPS, Right, I'm going to... Where were we? We was up to chapter... Here, weren't we? No, we hadn't done procedures. We was here. That's it. Ifs. So we're chap we'll say we're chapter 15. Four next loops. And we'll carry on. Um... Ooh, 
Can't wait to see the dem the beta then, mate. So we'll carry on on the next stream from four next loop, so we can understand understand that. Translate for the foreigner, please. <laughs> And uh, we will carry on learning the BBC Micro, both basic and machine code. All right, guys. I will say thank you very much for joining me. Um, take care. I don't know if there's anybody on. Um, no worries. And I'll see you in the next stream. Have fun, guys. Take care. I'd like to thank all the Patreons that are contributing to my channel. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing right now. Thank you very much.